it was it was taking a while there. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Um, so I wanted, yeah, I wanted to uh, touch base a little bit about who we are and uh, explain who we are and what we're doing and why we're doing it. So um, basically over the summer, I decided to um, basically sell my house and hit the road and start doing some traveling. Um, I have been frustrated with uh, my last regular job and I was trying to sell some products online. I wasn't really happy with that. So I decided I was going to start a, a travel blog that was going to focus on the national parks of not only the United States, but also other countries. So far, I've been to 16 national parks in the USA and some other really exotic locations. And I'm going to probably visit about another 10 more or so this year, plus some other great locations as well. So as I'm building that, um, Kim is actually working on some things herself. Uh, she has Soul Sandwich, which is her group, her website on Facebook. That's right. And then she's also working on a standalone website as well. So um, just so you know a little bit more about me, I'm single, never married, no kids. Whereas Kim has done the exact opposite in her life. She's been married. She's been divorced. She has kids. She has grandkids now. So she's got like it all the opposite of what I have. So you're going to get the men's side of things and you get the women's side of things the single life and the married life, the divorce life, everything. We're going to try to cover everything here. So, Kim, why don't you tell everybody about yourself? Well, first of all, I just want to say hi to Rosanna and Rick Dahlenbeck. They're on. I just thought I'd say hi. But um, I'm doing Soul Sandwich, Better Living. I think some of you have seen my Facebook page, and it's been a real joy to me to kind of share things in my own life. You know, I think there's nothing worse than somebody who's motivational that looks like they have it all together, and I definitely do not have it all together. So I try to kind of give uh, different posts that might mean something to somebody else that have meant to me. Um, I'm really looking forward to expanding my life coaching um, business, and I, I just love helping people. I'm, a, I'm just something that's been in me since I was very, very little. So this is just. So I just. Are you, Are you there? Okay. The screen froze yeah. up for a and second. And I'm really excited about okay. this because we're going to talk about relationships and um, different things. I think that are really going to speak to a lot of people that are in that midlife crisis area. You know. What would you say that yeah, is? What ages would you yeah, say? Gonna, I would say, you know, I've, I've heard people start to have issues like this starting in their mid thirties, you know, um, people right. in, getting around 33, 34, 35, uh, mm -hmm. all the way up into, you know, mid to late fifties. You know, I, I read a, um, an article probably about a year, year and a half ago that talked about how people who are in their, let's say their sixties, um, <laughs> people who are in their, let's say their 60s, are so much happier than people that are like in their 40s. And right. so it seems that as life goes on, people get more and more content with their lives and find a sense of happiness. So this area that we're talking about from, let's say, like 30 to 55 or so, could be a really turbulent time for people when they really start losing that youthful feel, that youthful right. um energy that they used to have you know they can't run it as fast as they used to they can't work out like they used to you know they have a couple of kids maybe and they feel like they can't keep up with them and and you know they're stressed out at work so we're going to talk about all those kinds of things so um so today's topic is when people get married sometimes you'll have situations where they just kind of disappear and i've seen this with friends over the years whether it's marriage or just having a serious boyfriend or girlfriend uh, it seems like they kind of fall off the map. Like they no yeah. longer have friends. They no longer have their outside activities and, and things that they used to enjoy. And they right. dedicate themselves completely to that serious relationship. And we're going to talk a little bit about, and if you guys have questions, feel free to you know shoot me a message here as well. And we can talk about that. So um, Kim, what's been your experience over the years? I think people kind of isolate themselves once they get in a relationship. I think there's, of course, that honeymoon nesting phase that's normal, right? The problem is, I think it goes on really long. If it goes on for a very long period of time, people start to kind of isolate themselves. And I think both of them are responsible for that. You know, the person that's putting the pressure on them and says, I don't want you to go out with your friends, all the way to the person who's saying, okay, I'm not going to go out with my friends. 
or just jealousy. We were talking about jealousy earlier when we weren't on uh, Facebook Live, you know, how deep that runs for a lot of people that they feel threatened that if he goes out with his friends, well, what's, what is he doing, right? So these things go back right. to childhood, kind of um, mistrust of present partners. I was listening to somebody today and they said, we don't choose people who, not everybody, but we don't, sometimes we don't choose people who are going to really love us as much as make us suffer. And that we mm. choose them based on those characteristics of continuing childhood suffering. I mean, that's kind of Freud-like, but, but it's sure. kind of true. <laughs> you know, right. I've heard it from men and women. Why do I keep picking the same person? He's possessive. He's jealous. He won't let me go out with my friends. And I'm like, well, why do you keep doing it? And, and the answer is, I don't know. I don't know. Because in the beginning, right, we've all heard it. In the beginning, he was charming and mm -hmm. it was great. And he was like, sure, go out and have a good time. And then as the relationship progresses, instead of becoming more enlightened or freeing, the grip starts to, I think, really tighten. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's been your experience, Tim, but. You know, it's, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I think that there, there are some situations where it is voluntary and then there are other situations where the other person is putting the clamps down on that, on that person sure. via jealousy and things. There's like victims that. volunteers, right? I mean. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've had friends where, you know, uh, they would hang, hang out with you every weekend for like, say, two or three months, and all of a sudden they disappear, and you're like, what's going on? And it's like, oh, they got a girlfriend, and now uh, you won't see them until they break up. You know, all, all of a sudden now the guy starts hanging out and everything every weekend. It's like, what, what's up with your girlfriend? Oh, we broke up like a couple of weeks ago. Well, you know, why aren't you incorporating that person into your life instead of either or? Well, you know, have and, you ever done, like, just been in a really bad cycle with somebody and – didn't know why you were in that cycle? Well, I've been in bad cycles. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think, uh, we, are you, do you it's mean? a motorcycle. Uh, in the, no, in the relationship or, or with the friendship? Re relationship cycle. Where you, you clearly yes. know that that kind of woman is not good for you, but you will continue to oh, yeah. seek out that kind of woman. Yeah, I, I think that... Um, you know, I can I can put a very outgoing persona out there, like on these videos and stuff. Right. But when it comes to really like approaching a woman and being uh, assertive, I tend to be shy in that way. I've always been that way since I was a little kid, and I've never been a really aggressive dater and stuff like that. So right. for me, you know, I guess. I, you know, I'm only going to attract someone who's going to kind of meet me halfway or give me some kind of signal that things are, it's okay to approach me. I'm not that right. kind of guy to go walk around the bar and proposition 30 women in one night. That's just, I, that's never going to happen with me. Right. So, yeah. So I tend to attract the same kind of woman because I'm not, I'm not going to uh, go after certain types of women if they're going to be more standoffish or that. So Right, right. So yeah, it's, it's you know there's there's there are patterns in the way we do things, and a lot of that can come down to you know how we were raised, or mm -hmm. our past experience in relationships, or uh, you know who we're around. Maybe if we're around our friends, we're one way, and if we're alone out you know and doing our thing, sometimes we're different in those situations. So yeah, it can it can manifest itself in many different ways. Right. Uh, Christy just wrote, trust is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else wants to write in, please do ask questions. You know, uh, Cindy Pius is watching right now. Hi, Cindy. So, oh, uh, Heidi. So trust. Uh, Let's talk about trust. So trust, yeah. when we're talking about trust, are you saying that even though you're in a relationship, you're not going to have a lot of trust in that person? Or, you know, how, do, how does that work? Do you I mean, automatically when, when do you trust the person? Yeah, or is trust earned? Or I don't know. It does it take a certain period of time until you're comfortable with that? Maybe in the first six months, maybe you're not comfortable with that person going out. And then maybe a year or two into the relationship, you're like, oh, get out of here. Go go hang out with your friends for a while. Leave me alone, you know? So yeah. where where does that, how does that happen? Um, or does it, it or, I don't think it gets better. Does, 
So you think he gets worse. So in other words, the oh, longer yeah. you're with somebody. You're putting your best foot forward in the beginning. Okay. And you are you are editing yourself. Okay. Like right. every single bad thing about you, you've edited right. out. I mean, you're like basically right. Facebook, you know, how we edit out all the bad things in our life. We show all the great things in our life. And then other people go, oh, why is my life not as great as that person's on Facebook? And I think it's the same thing in the beginning of dating. You are making edits to your personality. You're not really vulnerable. You're vulnerable because you could be rejected, right? But at the same time, a lot of defenses go up because it's that fear of being rejected. And here you found this perfect person. And I put it, you know, the more knowledge you find out about that person, the less crush you get. You ever notice that? Yeah. Right. So mystery, mystery has a huge deal with sexual attraction and, and why people come together. It's the mystery. And mm -hmm. a lot of times I think the longer somebody is with you, the less mystery there is. And you kind of have to regain that mystery. Have you ever heard of Esther Perlman? She's a um, relationship expert. I think so. She's great. Like if, if anybody out there, uh, wants to really listen to some really intelligent talk about relationships. It's Esther Perlman. And, and she said that um, you have to recreate mystery again. You have to start to see the person as you saw them when you first met them. And sometimes the best way to do that is actually to stand off a bit instead of being so up close. So actually giving that person space to be something, let's say your partner sings right at an open mic to stand in the audience and to stand back and to see how other people are relating and reacting to that person actually can stir up those feelings, those old feelings again of that, you know, what everybody talks about spark, right? The, to mm -hmm. regain the spark of marriage. I don't think it's, it's um, necessarily in closeness, intimacy. I think it's in being able to step back and allowing to, or being able to see that person as a separate identity than you, much right. like it was when you first met them. We have an awful lot of expectations, I think, when we first get together, you know, that this person's going to fulfill me. This person's going to complete me. This right. did a lot of fables, especially right. women. Okay. Especially women. <laughs> really? I never noticed. We are indoctrinated with Cinderella, like early. This idea And pretty woman. Pretty woman. Yes. The guy's going to guy's gonna ride in a white horse. He's going to rescue me. Yes. From my life. Absolutely. He's gonna he, he's gonna take me out of this situation. He's gonna put me in the palace wearing the glass slipper and everything else. What's wrong with so, that? <laughs> I, listen, happens all the time. But yeah, one, right. one other thing I want to point out that <laughs> I want to point out um, when when we we're talking about like jealousy and everything. Right. So I think there's two main ways that jealousy manifests. There's two main reasons why jealousy manifests itself. First would be people are terrified. A lot of people are terrified about being alone. Yes. They're afraid about, there's a lot of abandonment issues out there. Now that could be, maybe they had a parent that they didn't, you know, they weren't close to and the, that relationship failed, or maybe there were, uh, they were married and the person took off or whatever. There could be all these issues and people are terrified of being alone. I've spent a good portion of my life alone. I, I've gotten to the point, I love being alone. I mean, you know, you ever see that meme where it's like, uh, I, I love being around people until I want to be alone. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm a get lonely away child. No, actually. Right. I'm That's right. Child. That's so right. I, I played alone. I did everything alone. Right. Being alone for me is exciting. Like I, I could get in my car right now, go to Toronto, spend the night there, go out to dinner, listen to some live music, go to an art museum. I'd be perfectly satisfied. But right. I know people who cannot even get in their car alone or like they yep. can't be in the house alone. I don't know if anybody out there is that's watching has a really hard time with this. Or let's say your spouse or partner says, hey, I'm going to go out and play pool. And you feel offended because he or she did not ask you as if it's right. like you have to be together. You, right. you can't be sitting at home watching TV. I can't relate with that because I'm good with that. But. I so I, I think, yeah, so I think that part of, you know, being alone is a really scary thing for certain people. And I think the other thing is control. I mean, it, it's about, you know, I don't want you to have a life without me. You know, I don't right. want you to go and have your own interests. I want you to check with me first. Right. I you want you because... to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
No, I was just going to say, like, I, you know, I think sometimes people will think that that person is choosing to, you know, go bowling or go fishing or whatever um, to get away from that person or to try to Correct. create space. To me, I just think that, you know, when people have their own interests, they bring much more to the relationship that way. Right. It's good to cultivate those relationships outside of the marriage because then, you know, you can bring in other people that can have a, a good, strong influence. And other people, you know, in certain situations are going to say, no, 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 no. That's going to be a negative influence on our relationship because now that person may want to spend more time with those other people. Right. And that's where that whole trust issue comes in again. I think it's really hard for people our age. You know, I think when you're 20, you have all this hope and love in your heart and you're going to meet this person. They're going to fulfill you and, you know, they're going to complete you. I mean, this is the, the dogma, I think, of, of right. pop culture, right? This is right. a really new concept. I mean, if you look back, you know, even 1900, marriage was about economics. It, was, it wasn't that people didn't fall in love, but the expectation right. was the same as it is now now you're supposed to fulfill everything right you're my shaman medicine man you're my you're my priest you're my um mr fix it you right, right. you're supposed to fill all these roles and you're supposed to be my yeah. lover and right that gets squoze out because there's just so many hours in the day so people stop being physically and emotionally intimate because now i'm expecting you to do all these different tasks that a long yeah. time ago in a village, other people did, you know, and, and people knew what, what was expected of each other. And I think now we just put so much pressure on each other to fulfill every aspect. So when you want right. to go out and pool, your girlfriend's going to be like, well, wait a minute. We're right. going to watch PBS tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't don't ride on PBS. I like you. my car. <laughs> oh no, we got to watch Real Housewives of someplace, you know, or whatever. Real Housewives don't. of Bradford. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Township. Custer City. Yeah, right. Lewis Run. So uh, that'd, be really, we that'd be great. We should, oh my god, we should put a little serious together on that one. Yeah, could you imagine? No, so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you, know, you know, this expectation that you're going to fulfill me and you're going to do all these things for me, I think it just it it strangles people. This is, I think, why people don't stay together long. Because by the time you're 40, you've been through so much stuff, the cheating, right. you know, the betrayals. And so you get into this new relationship. Why do you think that this relationship is going to be any different than any other relationship? I well, think I that's think what that, people I, think. Yeah, I think that, you know, people, people have these expectations, like you're saying, of being able to check off all the boxes. Right. And they think that if you don't check off 10 out of 10 boxes, well, then forget it. You're not good enough. It's like, right. what? You know, right. look, you're, you're going to have some, you're going to have some, um, you know, uh, some, some certain things that you're going to say, I cannot deal with, you know, some deal breakers. You're going to say, okay, you know, for me, it's like no smoking. I can't date. I've tried it. I can't date someone that smokes. Okay. Um, you know, there's certain think, type of people. What? Yeah. What's that? You, what there's do you think of it? Like, I'm, I'm not a smoker. I don't particularly like smoking. I don't know if I could live with smoking. Right. right. Do you think that's being picky? No. Okay. No, I think, I think because that's, that's a, a certain situation where, okay. Or, or even like having a pet. Some people right. are like, they don't like having pets around because you know what? They don't like the smell. They don't like the smell of the litter box. They don't like the smell right. of the dog, or whatever, you know, or they don't want to spend, you know, every Saturday giving the dog a bath or taking him out to walk or whatever. So you know, there's certain things that you're committing to that, you know, I don't, I just can't handle the smell of smoke around that other person. Like even someone that says, I'll go outside and smoke. I can still smell it in her hair, on her skin and all these other things. I can't do yeah. that. So but some people those would are, say you're being too picky. You know, at our age, can we be well, that, that particular? Tough. Tough. If you want to be with Mr. Wonderful, this is the way it works. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, we're the, so the thing is, right. If you want to be with me, yeah, we're Mr. the okay. Mr. I Modest. Ready, by the way. Right. So yeah, there are a few things, you know, that, that you're, you're saying that, um, you know, no offense, but I don't want to be with someone who has like four or five kids. That's a lot of responsibility. I, I don't feel that at this point in my life, I can commit to something like that 
to, you know, being, because even if you're not going to be like the dad or whatever, you're going to have a strong influence on those kids. And you have to really, if you're going to sign up for that, then that's, that's really important that you're committed to that. So there's certain right. things that you know, are going to be deal breakers, but then, you know, people are so picky nowadays that, and I, I, you know, this is, I'll give you the scenario. So the last 13 years I spent living in South Florida okay. and the dating and the dating, uh, the dating strategy there in many cases is people right. date for a certain period of time. And then mm -hmm. when a bigger, better deal comes along, they drop the person they're with and go with the next person. Guy, woman, whoever. I've seen it on both sides. So people tend to sit there and go, oh, well, you know what? This person checks off one extra box. Is that, you know, is that a good thing? Is that really worth it? Is that person really committed to you? Maybe there's other things that they aren't going to be doing or fulfilling for you. But Well, that's a good point, too, because if we get back to the original question of, you know, he's always going out with his friends. He's not spending any time with me. Right. We kind of blame that person for being angry. You know, how do you balance that out? Like uh, he's cheated on me once before. Um, or right, I, right. I caught him online talking to somebody else. Yep. And now he wants to go out or he doesn't want to, there's no accountability. I mean, there's no respect. Sure. Right. So sure. what do you do with a person sitting home feeling like that person is going out and doing things that they don't, you know, just to be fair, yeah. right? It's, we kind of put it on that person saying they're too jealous. Yeah. But how do how do we, what do we do with that? Well, yeah, especially if you have someone who uh, has had a checkered past as far as being faithful. You know, that that's, I, you know, I've told, you know, people in the past, you know, when, right. when they've confronted cheating, say, look, you know, you, you have to make a decision, you know, is this going to be something that's okay for you? You know, because if it happened once, there's a good chance it's going to happen again. I'm not saying always, but if you get in a situation where you're married and the person's cheating on you, then they've gone past the threshold. They've gone yeah. through that threshold. And there's no taking that back. So right. are you going to be okay if it happens again and again and again because there's that strong possibility? Did you see what Jeff Yacht wrote? He said, no second chances yeah. on cheating. Strike one and you're out. I think okay. a true apology comes with changed behavior. Okay. So could that happen? And someone actually really understands what they did, understands the behavior. I think it takes a lot of healing between two people to be able to, to mend that. But my question is, is if somebody has cheated on you and their change, their behavior has not changed and now they're going out to play pool and you're not sure whether they're at pool or not, right. I think you can't really be looking at them. They're going to do what they do. Like moss growing right. on a tree. I read that once. So you don't get angry at moss. You don't shout at moss on a tree. Hope not. Okay. <laughs> because it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And there's people right. who are unconscious who are doing exactly and the only way they know how. And then you have to decide for you, am I willing, or where are my boundaries, right? Am I willing to sit at home while he or she is out and not know, or do I just want to torture myself? I think some, some relationships oh, are like this dynamic sure. of, I'm going to sit at yeah. home and obsess about what you're doing. And that other person is doing what they want to. I can't see how that's not a bad cycle, a psychic cycle of pain. But like sure. I said before, we pick people who make us suffer again. Yeah. It's funny. I, I worked with a guy one time who, um, Every so often, he wouldn't go home. He, he right. would, you know, leave work and he would shack up with a woman. And meanwhile, his wife and three, I think three or four kids at home. And he just wouldn't come home for a few days. And, you know, right. and, and um, you know, one day, one of the guys at work asked him, like, why do you do this? I mean, it, it, you know, your wife's going to be pissed off about it. You know, she's going to throw you out of the house. Why right. do you do it? And he goes, you know. It's just kind of how I was raised. My dad always had, you know, a, another woman on the side and everything. And yeah, sometimes he would, he goes, but the thing is, he goes, I love it. I love the drama. I, I, I got to stir it up every once in a while. I got to, right. you know, that's the, the way that he feels alive. And it was just like, 
I can't, I cannot identify with that. I'm, I'm the total opposite. You bring drama to me? Uh, nope. Sorry. See ya. Block. Yeah, I don't have drama. Yeah. I really so don't. it's like you get the you get the juju stiff arm, as I call it, juju Smith Schuster for all my stiff arm. Yeah, I'll I'll show you later. Anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway, you yeah. you give up. You're like no way, and and I've probably given up on relationships too soon in certain cases because, you know. People were like overreacting about dumb things, you know, just little right. things, blowing them up and trying to create an argument out of things that I'm sitting here going, why are we arguing about this? I mean, it's not, it's, it's a non-issue. So, um, so yeah, yeah, there are, there are, there are a huge amount of people out there who need the drama, you know, right. they need to have arguments and have that passion coming out and, um, right. So yeah, there there are going to be jealousy issues and anger issues and and uh, the fear of right. someone you know going out to a movie one night with their girlfriend and then she's never coming home again. Well, that you know that's not you know what I mean like she's you know hooking yeah. up with some guy or whatever. So have you um, ever read so the book of the... the Four Agreements? Have you ever read the book The Four no. Agreements? There's there's four agreements and God, I can only remember three of them and. <laughs> They are uh, don't make assumptions. Uh, don't take things personally. Always do your best. And honest to God, I can't remember the fourth one. It's a great book. It's like four chapters, four or five chapters. Okay. And one of those things is that mind reading. I think women do this a lot. If if my partner has made me angry, he's gone out, he's played poor it's at the football game, whatever he's doing, okay? And he's left me at home because he wants to spend time with his friends, hasn't seen his friends in a long time. And I'm sitting there stewing and I'm mind reading now, right? As to why he wants to be there instead of here. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of asking him, because asking him takes a lot. D to use language, to teach your partner what you want, takes a lot of uh, effort. Okay. Sure. Most people don't want to take the effort. So when well, he gets bravery. home. It's bravery. And I'm sitting there and he goes, what are you pissed off about? And I go, Nothing. And in my head, I'm thinking, why isn't he asking the right questions? Here's the thing. He may be oblivious that there's even a problem, right? right. All he's thinking about is getting home and taking his boots off and getting a sandwich and sitting down to watch TV with me. You know, the rest of PBS, it's halfway done. Right. <laughs> he wasn't there. Downton Abbey. So, you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm stewing and I'm stewing. And this is part of that psychic cycle of pain, right? Because this is the game. Right. Now you have to guess why I'm angry at you. And suddenly right. you're an idiot because right. you that's exactly that's why welcome, I'm angry welcome, at you. welcome to our game show. Right. This is you the know? game show, right? Right, yes, right. Right? Yes. right. See if you can <laughs> guess what's in here. Yeah. It's like, yes, please. Tell, tell me. Tell me. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you ever see that, that meme where she's laying in bed and he's laying in bed and she goes, what are you thinking? And he says, nothing right and she can't believe right. you know right. he's really not thinking anything or she says oh so, he's thinking that other woman he's he's thinking right. and then his head is like football scores so right <laughs> I think so let me tell women, you exactly yeah uh, hold on let me just tell you because that's a great point yeah here's what in the last decade or so whenever a woman asks me what i'm thinking yeah. you know what my response is this is what? probably what i'm single but i say i'm thinking how i'm going to dump you that's and you know what they never ask. But here's the deal. The reason That's why I say that is awful. No, That's but the terrible. reason why I say that the reason why I say that is because I tell them the first day I meet them, I'm like, look, don't ever like sit there and ask me, well, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking? What? Are you, I'm not thinking about. If I'm thinking about something, I'll tell you. No, I'm not. I'm not hiding. Here's things. here's how you handle that, honey. What? I'm just thinking about how beautiful you look today. Oh God. I'm just thinking about how great you were last night. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how so you're I love you're telling me, you're telling me I should lie to a woman. You <laughs> yes, should tell you I lie. lie. Okay. I always tell lie that lie. Lie as much yeah. as possible. They're certain, yeah. I wouldn't call them lies. I would call them, I'm saving my life. Right? That's what I would call them. Like, uh, do I look fat in these pants? Right? No. Well, here's the thing. No, no, no. Here's the no, thing. I. Well, I like I like I like a woman with curves, so I tell him, "Yeah, you better look fat in those jeans." That's what I'm talking about. Oh wow, I don't know. But P H A T, P H A T, not not F A T. So. Oh, P H A T. Yeah, I'm sure you spell that out when you're saying. That. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, um, I think I think sometimes it's good to amend 
certain thoughts, right? Okay. To keep the peace. Because you do feel that way about her. It's not like you don't. If you don't think she's beautiful, and you know, you probably shouldn't be saying it. But I'm assuming that if you're with her, you think she's beautiful. But here's the thing, you know, that it's a that's a big difference in the sexes where women think guys are 24 seven thinking about the relationship, evaluating, you know, analyzing, 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 analyzing. No, we're not. We're not. When we're just sitting Depends there, on the man. you know. Depends on the man. I, I, know, I know very men who are few overthinkers. men. You don't know men who are no. overthinkers. Debbie Thornton over just said, be impeccable with your words. That was that was the fourth one. So this kind of like ties in. Be impeccable with your words. Make sure your words okay. mean something. Right? Because if you right. tell her, I'm not thinking of anything. I'm sorry. I don't think any woman will actually believe you. It's really hard right, so to here's, someone's thinking. Here's the nothing. things that guys. Here's the here's the thing that guys right. are thinking. All right. So, um, you know, my sister's birthday is coming up. I gotta buy her a birthday card. Uh, I gotta buy dog food for the dog. Uh, you know what? I gotta get my oil changed. That's another thousand miles. That's what we're thinking of. We're not sitting okay. there, twenty four seven evaluating the relationship. You know, if we're if we're out to dinner with you, if we're out to dinner with you, and there's a, a three minute silence, maybe we're just really enjoying the bread and the butter. Then be impeccable with your words and say, I'm really enjoying this time with you. Or I'm really okay. thinking about how I'm going to take care of this house this week and you. It's the same thing. It's just not saying okay. I'm thinking about putting gas in the vehicle. Okay. <laughs> She's going to take your temperature. It's, it's <laughs> impossible. I think Which way? Not in the mouth, not hopefully. You want to take the temperature right. of the relationship. Right. Right? I got Reverse. you. I got you. We got all these connections, like all, right, gentlemen? I don't know. I don't see any guys out there talking right now. Jeff, yeah, what are we doing for a quarterback next year? <laughs> see? Like, That's what we're thinking that about. Him? That's what we're thinking about. <laughs> Kim Yacht will agree. Jeff Yacht. Is he your yeah. friend? I think he's your yes, friend. I Kim, Kim is also my, yeah. Kim, Kim, I was Kim's Florida husband. Well, I lived what? in Florida. I was, I yeah. So Jeff and Kim live in Pittsburgh. Oh. They're married, but I was yeah. the Florida husband. So whenever, you know, they came down to Florida it was to visit the Florida husband because I was the Florida husband. So she goes, "What is happening here?" <laughs> yeah, Jeff stirred things up. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've been in Las Vegas. I've been in Las <laughs> Vegas for like a month and a half. She said yes. She left me. She said yes. She left me. Okay. Yes, I left. I left South Florida. Therefore, I abandoned her. She's got some issues. She probably needs some counseling. <laughs> so, um, I've been in Las Vegas for like a month and a half. It's been something like 110 or 15 days since it's rained. And the right. first day we do our first video, and I'm gonna. I did it outside because it's so nice out here. It starts raining. Yeah, is it raining? 115. Yeah, it's it's sprinkling now. So, but it's all right. That's it feels good. Oh. Back to what we were saying before we yeah. wrap up here. I mean, what's the answer? Okay, so she wants to go out with her friends. She's looking great, by the way. I mean, she's done it all yeah, up. Yeah. Well, on and her yeah, high heels. Right. Here's a big right. problem, right, for a lot of men. They're like, why do you look so good? Who are you trying to impress? Why is that skirt so short? Yeah. The, the right. What men understand a lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times women dress for other women. And women right. dress to feel good that's you know kind of wired into us not everybody right there's a lot of women who look great without makeup and all those things but for women going out they're going to dress up you know and there he is sitting on the couch by himself how does he how does he create some safe boundaries right christina Lucy said dress for yourself yep um how do you create some safe boundaries mentally as a guy if you're not very good at expressing your feelings on any given day? That's a great question. Yeah, for someone you know that that um, that the, for someone that's not good at being vulnerable with their feelings and being right. able to express, hey, honey, you know, I'm a little. I don't really think that's an appropriate outfit. You know what I mean? And 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 kind of saying that, you know, and. Bad. Bad comment. Someone, though, right? yeah. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, someone that is uh, maybe has a low self esteem, mm -hmm. someone that maybe, uh, you know, maybe they don't look as good as they did 20 years ago when they first got married. And, you know, she's starting to work out at the gym and she's got right. a couple personal trainers and, you know, 
they're going out for some smoothies, you know? So right. there's, there's, um, yeah, for someone that, that is, um, a little more introverted, mm-hmm. someone who isn't as good at expressing themselves, that's gonna be a tough conversation. And a lot of times it's going to be just buried. And, it, and then it, at some point it'll explode. Do you so think that's number one anger for a lot of men or with, just withdrawing? How, how do you feel about that? We were talking about, and I don't want to put men in the box of all, all men are domestic abuse abusers and all women are, are victims of that. I mean, I think it goes both ways, honestly. I think there's a lot more male right. abuse than we can ever imagine, right? <laughs> Emotional abuse, uh, physical abuse. Um, the number one way most men um, are abused is head injuries, believe it or not. But it's right. a serious, it's a serious problem. But I mean, how do you right. take that, you know, those feelings and, and where do they go? I mean, do they go into anger into other things or do they go into withdrawing? That's, that's a good question because, you know, um, I, like I said, I think a lot of times the guys are going to bury it. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. But meanwhile, it's eating them up inside. You know, they're, they're really sitting there going, you know, this really bothers me. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, men, men have been taught, you know, from an early age, toughen up. Right. You know, you don't, you don't cry. You don't, you shouldn't have an emotion and stuff like that. So certain guys are going to bury it, but then when there's an argument, it's going to explode. So it could be an argument about, Take, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's going to be an argument yeah. about, like, taking out the trash. And it's like, you know, some, something's going to come out of, you know, something right. little like that. It's going to explode on the big stuff. Right. So that's one thing. The other thing is, <clears throat> like you're saying, abuse. You know, there could be situations where, you know, the guy is like, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen. And the whole control and the fear of being alone and all these other things that we talked right. about earlier manifest themselves in violence um so yeah yeah it's yeah look it's <clears throat> the only way it's going to work is by discussing it and having an open honest conversation right maybe he doesn't have anything to worry about you know but until they have that conversation it's just going to fester yeah i i think you really have to respect your partner i i, I think you have to really respect them and be able to let go a little and, and, and not be so um, bound up in what this person is doing for me. Right. I, I think it takes a really healthy person to sit at home. I mean, I think I'm pretty healthy, but I think if a man said to me, I'm going to go out and play pool tonight. And let's say I like playing pool too. And he didn't invite me. <laughs> I'm going to feel right. a little bit of that, but then I'm going to think I respect him. I respect his time. And, and we've spent day after day together. I mean, remember what I said about intimacy sometimes kills love. It really does. Right. I know it's weird, but I think too much of it kind of can kill that um, that sexual energy between two people. And so by allowing him to go out and be separate from me and see him in a different way may really kind of when he comes home kind of be a reunion rather than a <laughs> fight fest. Plus, he's going to be happy. People who actually respect each other's time are still kind of accountable without asking for permission, right? Like respectfully saying, hey, I want to go out this night. You know, is this okay with you? I mean, it depends on how you say it. I think if you have to ask for permission to go out, I think that's a totally different. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think there's a difference yeah, between saying, think, hey, uh, Wednesday, I'd like to go out. What do you think versus can I go out on Wednesday? Right? Well, here's the thing. Looping it, looping it back to our initial premise. Right of, you know, out, having outside relationships when you're married or in a serious relationship even. Right. I think that in the beginning, you should say, look, here's, here are my interests. I like to go out with the guys every Thursday night, have a couple of beers, you know, sometimes we go bowling or maybe we go golfing after work or whatever and be able to have that time and still, you know what, that's part of my routine. It's how I keep in contact with my friends and everything. But my mom and asked us to go to dinner that night. I'm available Friday. That's not when we have I, our family dinners. <laughs> I could. Yeah, nobody has family dinner on Thursday. Come on, girl. No, I'm kidding. Okay, Wednesdays. But, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, but here's. Like, but, oh, but okay, I'm really so. To see you. Right? Well, so, I, look. I mean, I mean, maybe maybe somebody has to reschedule something. But if you. you know, right? <laughs> right. 
Whatever, yeah. <laughs> She's going to win the my mother's making pot roast argument over you needing to go out with your Well, guys. look, if, if, she's, if yeah. she's feeding me, if she's feeding me, I'm there. I don't care. All right. The guys can wait. All right, the guys can wait. But the, but the thing is, is that, you know, I guess our whole thought process on this was when you get married or in a very serious relationship, it's bringing two individuals together, not sacrificing two individuals to become one monolithic, you know, right. being. I mean, this right. is all about bringing the best of each other and sharing your life together. It's supposed to be sharing your life, not eliminating your lives and then, you know, sitting there and, and hating each other because you can't go out anymore, you know? Right. So right. that's that's the real thing is that, you know, I think if I think if that's really established in the beginning of the relationship, hey, you know, here's a couple, two, three things I like to do, you know, uh, my mm -hmm. friends and I we want to do every week or every two weeks or right. a couple times a year or whatever. I think, right. you know, that's really healthy. It, and it keeps, it keeps you from losing your identity. When you become so immersed in the relationship that you lose your identity, then you become resentful of that other person. We kind of touched on that before, you know? Yeah, because you should do what I want you to do because that's what I would do, right? You right. Act the way right. I want you to act because that's the way I would act. You should make decisions based on how I should. I mean, people do this with their kids too, right? We're taught really early, oh, these little people are extension of ourselves. They are not. They are their own people. They're their own souls. They have their own journey, right? They're going to make their own mistakes. They're not you. Well, how many, the worst how many kind parents? Of what? How, how many Sorry. parents have ruined their kids' lives by trying yeah. to make them into an all-star athlete? Right. You know? Like, exactly. like, you know, oh, well, you know, I, I love baseball. You should love baseball. And you're going to be a pitcher and you're going to throw left-handed and you're going to, you know. Right. And all these things Sounds and all this awful. pressure on the kid, right. you know. So same same thing, though. Yeah, it's like trying to make a mirror image of yourself. And, and I think that's just like a complete recipe for disaster. I mean, if you can't do it with your kids, you certainly can't do it with your partner. If, right. if he did not wear a suit when you met him, if, if he likes baseball caps and T-shirts and jeans, that right. is what he's wearing to your wedding. <laughs> right. Right? Like, right. like I've actually heard women say this, okay? Right. So I'll be talking to him about this guy that they're seeing. And go like, yeah, he's a little rough around the edges. And, uh, you know, he doesn't dress very well. And I don't like his hair. And I, that mus the mustache has got to go. And then they'll say, but once I get him, I'll change him. Right. I'm like, really? Because I doubt he's going to be happy with you making adjustments to his heard... physical and emotional and spiritual appearance. Like, I don't think you can go, well, I'll put him on a diet when right. we get together. Right. You're I've, I've heard people say, oh, I've, I've heard people say that, you know, once we get married or once we have the baby, everything will be fine. It's like, whoa, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. You guys are struggling on a daily basis and you want to mm -hmm. bring somebody else into the world or you want to you want to sign a lifetime contract with somebody you can't get along with on a daily basis? What are you thinking, you know? So Hey, there's people long into their marriage who will suddenly build the biggest home ever, like a four bedroom home that they can't possibly fill with this grandiose yep. idea that grandchildren and children are going to come back. And they build this huge thing because they think that that will keep the marriage together. Right, because they can't right. have a baby anymore. Right? right, they're not. They're probably have already renewed their vows. So what's next? Right. Next is I'm going to build this huge house so that we will stay together. And I don't think I've ever seen that work. Right. If you, I mean, people trap themselves financially sometimes to stay together. I don't know sure. if that's been your experience, but I think that well, I've seen a lot of that. You know, I've I've uh, worked in financial services for over 20 years, and right. you know, in the last few years, I've really sat down with a lot of clients, and you know, their thoughts about how to retire can be so opposed to each other. One yeah. person says, yeah. you know, like say the husband may yeah. say, you know what, I don't want to have a house in retirement because it's all this upkeep. I gotta you know cut the grass, I gotta do all the repairs, I gotta. You know, I'm going to have to redo the roof. I'm going to redo the, the sidewalk. And they don't want any part of that in retirement. Right. Whereas the wife is like, we can't sell the home where we raise the kids. This is where all our yeah. memories are. So, you know, yeah. and I've had people where, you know, I had a couple one time where they owned a hotel and they sold it for a boatload of money. Right. And now in retirement, 
the husband was like, oh, I'm going to go volunteer and I'm going to do this and that. And the wife was like, I've worked for the last 35 years, seven days a week. I'm volunteering for me. I'm going to right. see the grandkids. I'm going to, you know, do my thing. And yeah. it's totally different ideas about what retirement looked to them. Two and that could be a real strain, a real strain on a relationship if these totally diametrically opposed plans in retirement can literally break up a marriage. You know, I've, I've talked to people where they say, so how's retirement going? And, so, you know, let's say if, let's say, especially like if, if the woman's been a housekeeper, you know, not a housekeeper, a homemaker her whole mm -hmm. life. And now all of a sudden the guy's around 24 seven, she's like, can you get him out of the house once in a while? You know what I mean? So it's like, Oh my God, I didn't have to deal with this Paper person turn. all the time. Right. right. Now it's the like, woman God, that it's didn't so want nasty. him to go out and spend time He's... with his friends. Right, like, oh right, God, right, leave my home. right. Yeah. Get a hobby, will you please? Crazy. Right. So this yeah, uh, this was really good. Yeah. So you know, we're talking about, you know, we started out talking about people in their thirties, forties, and fifties, but now, you know, you talk about in their sixties, it's a totally different mindset now. Now it's mm -hmm. like you know, I'm slowing down in my career and everything, and now I'm looking at what is my everyday life going to be like. Now those priorities can be very, very different. Yeah. Well, I think it goes back to you have to be on the same page. And very rarely do people get on the same page at the point where the kids leave. It really has well, to, you really have to work that out while the kids are still there. And here's a separate issue. You know, it's you now getting out of the house without the kids and the kids going, why are you leaving without us? What, you're going to the movies? You're going to the movies? I want to go to the movies, right? And right. putting that boundary in saying, no, we're going to go to the movies. We're going to create at least something now. Let's say we didn't do it before. We're going to create that now so that when you guys leave in three years, you know, we're friends again. Right. I think that's, that's probably important to do. Well, I think that the problem is, is that People do the the thinking inside their head, but they don't verbalize it when they get to within that five year period before retirement. So they right. have this thought of, you know, here's how I envision my retirement as being, but they haven't communicated that to their spouse. So the spouse is thinking one lifestyle and the other spouse is thinking total opposite. Mind reading. This, yeah. So it's, you know, and, and. Right. You know, oh, well, yeah. You know, some people are like, oh, yeah, we're going to travel and everything. And the guy's like, I don't want to go anywhere. You know, I've been, you, didn't you know, say especially that. like, you didn't well, that. how is she supposed well, to know? It. Right. Right. Well, the thing is, is that maybe, you know, especially like someone who's traveled a lot, you know, it could be mm -hmm. a guy who's traveled in sales or the wife was a flight attendant for years. And maybe, you know, that person's like, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to sit in the backyard by the pool and mm -hmm. just relax. You know, right. whereas the other person's like, well, I haven't been out of this house in 20 years. You're taking me somewhere, you know? So yeah. that happens the, She's sometimes. expecting the man to take her somewhere who never liked to go anywhere except maybe three places to eat. Do you, do you know what right. I mean? And this is the part of right. the acceptance of if he doesn't like to go beyond Bradford, right? To, right. I think going to Buffalo is an adventure, all right? Yeah. Then most likely when he's 60 – that's not going to change. He's not suddenly going to no. want to go to Arizona with you and your friends. Um, no. Someone just wrote that. I can see if I can. Kimberly out wrote, people are living a lot longer, therefore the 60s are the new 40s. I agree with that because I'm 50. Yep. I'll be 52 this year. People are ready to live their life. Oh, I can't read the rest of it. I don't know what that says. But, um, yeah, they're they're ready to live their life. I think she meant, Kimberly, what did you mean by that? People are ready to live their life. Sooner, maybe do more fun things. I don't I can't, know. I can't see that. I'm sorry. I can't see the comment. I'm not sure why. Oh, but can't? Oh, yeah. It's cut off. I can't see the rest of it either. But, no. well, I think it just comes basically back down to trust. Um, and trust is earned. But sometimes you just have to let go and trust because you married that person or you're in a committed relationship with that person. I mean, if you're sharing the same home and you're sitting on the couch, then there's got to be some level of commitment and trust there. And if they're not trustworthy, well, then you got to look at yourself and go, well, why right. am I with, with someone who's not trustworthy? Right? right. Like, why am, yeah. I, why am I doing this night after night? Or here's the big thing. Maybe, maybe the problem is me. Maybe 
I have past issues of non-trust with a lot of different men or my father. I'm not saying me, but, you know, other people would trust issues like that. Um, how much am I projecting onto my new partner? Is this why I constantly, you know, break up with people because of my jealousy and possessive issues? Just wondering out there before we go, anybody have problems with jealousy and possessiveness? Really that would be vulnerable enough to... Anybody, anybody have right to get a restraining order on somebody? Yeah. <laughs> right. We want to share, you know, crimes of the heart. Right. Please don't yeah. tell us anything too bad. Um, Jim Femley is watching. I don't know. We've got about nine watchers right now. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in, everybody. It's uh, been an interesting, yeah. uh, interesting hour for us. This is our first is one. Our first we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be doing this every week, at least once a week. Yeah. And uh, there's going to be different topics from time to time. And if you have questions or ideas for topics, send us an email. I mean, it's easy to do. Uh, hit us up on Facebook, or uh, you can go to my website and hit me up, or you can go to Kim's page, uh, Soul Sandwich, and she can, you know, you can talk to her about different ideas, things you want to talk about. Uh, we're open to everything. So we're going to talk a lot about relationships, uh, you know, relationships being not only romantic relationships, but friendships, um, you know, family relationships whether it be brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, whoever. Um, there's also some things we're, we're going to talk about, too. You know, my website is Midlife Crisis Traveler. So we're, we're going to try to gear a lot of this towards people anywhere from, let's say, mid-30s to, you know, 60s, when, you know, you're going through different transitions in life, whether it be, you know, you're having kids, those kids are growing up, maybe your parents are getting older, uh, or maybe you're getting older. Maybe you're getting to a, a position where you're getting close to retirement or maybe you've just transitioned into retirement and you're trying to figure out, like, what you should do. You know, what, what, is, what is there that's going on in your life that maybe we can give you a different, different way to look at things, you know? So right. and we encourage your comments, your emails, everything. So this is number one, but this is going to be a weekly thing and maybe even uh, a couple times a week if we get enough information from people and they want to hear more from us. So, um, so that's where we're at right now. Feel free to message me or Tim. Uh, we'll answer all your questions. You can even leave, like you said, topics that we could explore a little bit more. So. Yeah. So the last thing I want to really wrap up with would be, I think our, our number one, number one message today, the moral of the story is that you want to communicate, you know, and, and I know a lot of these conversations can be very tough, especially with somebody you've been with for a while, you know, that maybe yeah. you're not sure how to approach it. Maybe you need a referee, you know, you can always get somebody, uh, a counselor, someone like Kim, who's a life coach, uh, someone to kind of help you, you know, if you reach out to those people to get an idea, how should I bring up this conversation? What should I say? What should I not say? You know, um, what are the main topics? What are the main issues? What is our relationship like now? What's our relationship going to be after I have this conversation? So you want to maybe touch base with somebody who's been through this before or talks to people about this stuff all the time. So that's in a way that you know, Kim and I can try to help you. Sorry for the background noise. but um, So anyway, that's, uh, that's where we're at. We're here to help you guys. If uh, you guys are having any problems or issues or things you want to talk about, let's bring it up. Let's you know, this is, we're building a community of people here that are going to uh, kind of share their life, their experiences, their thoughts, um, and, and we're going to solve problems here. So, uh, again, communication is number one, guys. If you're having a problem with your spouse, your significant other, whatever the situation might be, communication is the number one thing. And you know what? It, it, it may be stressful. It might be tough to bring up some of these topics. But it's better than let it fester and then all of a sudden it, it blows up into a big argument. It becomes a mountain instead of a molehill. So um, I hope you guys are able to, um, to take something out of that. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. All right. Take care, guys. Okay.